So we got Stuart Rhodes on the phone now. Hey, Stuart, how you doing? Doing fine. How are you doing? Doing very well, sir. So did you just arrive in Boston? No, actually, I'm in, I'm in Memphis, Tennessee. And we're okay. driving up from Memphis. We're bringing some folks who are speaking who cannot fly. Oh, okay. Okay, so Stuart... Who cannot fly. <laughs> okay. Prefer so, that, too. Yeah, I understand, especially in these times. Now, Stuart, what was your first thought when you heard about this bombing yesterday? did what, it's going to be used as another excuse and pretext to strip away our freedoms. And what you just said is exactly what I was thinking is going to happen. Is we're going to try to airportize America mm -hmm. and make it so that any, any sort of event like this, you have to go through scanners and body scanners and x-ray machines. And to let you know, if you enter this area, you will be so to search and all your belongings will be so to search. In other words, a fourth amendment free zone. Yeah. So I think that's, what, that's what's going to come in, in, uh, in the wake of this. Now, Stuart, we've seen a lot of police and military out there. We saw, heard from uh, Dan Badani yesterday. He said military were checking people's bags, running checkpoints. And we understand the need for security, but, you know, is that a violation of posse commentators? What do you think about police and military out there checking people's bags? Well, I think it was the National Guard. As far as I, as far as I know, it was probably the Massachusetts National Guard. So, you know, it's a, it's a gray area in the law. If they're doing it as part of a stability force for the, under the command of the governor, then that's their responsibility to the state militia. But if they're doing it to, to enforce laws, then that's a, that's a potential violation of Posse Comitatus. Mm -hmm. so not. It's, it's not as bad as having the standing army do it, mm -hmm. but in the current environment with the nationalization of police and the, and the, and the, you know, the creation of the LIVCOM, it's all kind of a cohesive whole anyway. So that's right. It's, it's not the same thing as your state militia. And I, and, I guess, and I guess what concerned me is that it wasn't in the area immediately surrounding the bombing, uh, where you could imagine that they might put in uh, increased uh, National Guard and, and police mm -hmm. to try to uh, look at a suspect, because a lot of times if there's a fire, the arsonists will come back to the fire. So right. certainly they're going to do something at that site. But this is something that is happening, Stuart, all across the country. I mean, these are shots of people in Atlanta. Uh, police doing this to people in Atlanta and in, in uh, right. California, all over the country, they're doing it. They're bragging on the radio that uh, Art, Art Acevedo here in Austin is saying, "Yeah, we're heightened alert and everything." They haven't started doing anything like that here, fortunately yet, but they're doing this all across the country where there haven't been any attacks. Well, we'll just come up with it in the wake of the new uh, shooting. You, know, you, had, you had people capitalizing on that across the country to put through their pet agenda. That's what I'm saying. I think I think they had a shopping list of things they wanted to do. It's like just like prior to 9/11, there were a list of things that powers they wanted and the next you know the next step they want to take. And then when they had their emergency, then they get then they take the steps. Yep. And so you know I think I think you're spot on. You know, roving searches and scans and all that is what they're going to try to bring to small town America. Now, Stuart, we've seen them already with pretty much no evidence blame right-wing groups, uh, people who are concerned about their liberties. You know, how does somebody respond? How does a group respond to being blamed for that? Being blamed for what? what you, for the bombing, about? they've already started to blame uh, right-wing groups, people concerned about their liberties and uh, things such as that. We've heard Chris Matthews and some other people say that. Is that what you're talking about? If yes. Well, Peter Bergen as well on CNN and uh, Salon. A lot of, you know, the, the usual suspects are out there claiming that the, uh, the people who are constitutionalists and libertarians are the usual suspects. Right. Well, so this, is just their, this, is, this is like a cold war. This is a propaganda machine, and they're going to go after their political enemies. Right. If it was a leftist, you'll never hear, the, you'll never hear it again. You'll never hear about it again. Mm -hmm. so, so as soon as it turns out to be a leftist, they shut up. Mm -hmm. But until then, they, they do what they can to use it as a, as a weapon of war against their political opponents. Absolutely. So it's a propaganda machine. It's, it's, like, it's like having uh, the KGB in, in cahoots with Pravda, or like having you know, the Nazi party in cahoots with the, with the papers they owned back then, too, in, in, in Nazi Germany. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Now, Stuart, have you ha been able to have any contact with anybody on the scene? I've been traveling, but speaking in, in Oregon and Washington State and, and Idaho, and now I'm in Memphis, Tennessee. So I really haven't had a chance to talk to our guys in Massachusetts yet. So I mean, it's a it's a horrific event, but this is this is the problem: is that horrific events are always used, you know, just like Newtown, just triple mm -hmm. yes. freedom. It's the way it's been throughout history. Every regime has always used terrorism as a weapon against its political dissidents, as a way to shut them up, to unify the people against them.
eternal enemy. It's just like 1984. You've got to have an enemy. That's right. Exactly. Uh, you know, whether, whether they did it themselves or whether they're taking advantage of it, this is the end result. The end result is, is they'll, they'll tell you the only answer is, is, is more freedom must be given up. That's right. They're going to extend this out to a group. They're going to have some patsy or they're going to have somebody there, and they're going to extend it out to attack the group that they don't like. And, and I don't know if it'll happen in today's press conference, but Obama's having a press conference in uh, three hours, I believe. Yeah, which is more important, another war with another country or, or, or uh, cracking down on domestic dissidents? It, mm -hmm. it depends. That, that's how you're going to find out who they're going to come down on. That's right. Unless they have a clear person who actually did it, they're going to they're gonna use it in whichever way they find most useful, either for, for, for foreign you know, boogeyman or domestic boogeyman. Okay. All right. I'll go ahead, David. Right. You're heading up to uh, Boston, though, right? For the uh, Boston, Boston. going to Lexington. Right, Lexington. Concord. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, For and you'll be there April nineteenth to celebrate the anniversary of Lexington and Concord. That's right. We're going to be speaking on the green again. Uh, the gun rights across America of Massachusetts has secured a permit to use the actual green on, the, on April nineteenth, which is the day of the battle. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to go back there and, and do an oath renewal ceremony and a rally. I'm inviting anybody who wants to go is more than welcome to come and join us. Great, great. And I'm sure you'll be pointing it out that uh, they didn't just have muskets, they also had cannon. Well, sure. They had, mm -hmm. they had the infantry weapons of their day. That's right. And that's an important point, is that the Second Amendment is supposed to preserve the military capacity of the American people, and that means you should have the, the same capacity as a modern infantry unit. How is it going to repel invasions or suppress insurrections or execute the laws of the Union? as the Constitution calls for a new abortion, too. Exactly. Now, Stuart, in these times, what would you suggest to somebody who was concerned about their Second Amendment rights? Should they, you know, contact their senators, their congressmen? What action should somebody take? To purge out anybody of any party who votes for even a, a fraction of gun control. I mean, if this latest, or, or, or a fraction of gun rights violation, this latest uh, so-called compromise, is it Mocking and, and, and Tooney? Two senators, Republican mm -hmm. and Democrat, who, who took up this compromise, um, they all should be, be seen as pariahs. They're, no matter which party they're in, no matter what their arguments are, you don't give up any more of your ground. They've given up too much already. Like I guess that before, you're supposed to have a full military capacity of an infantry, infantry unit. And from 1968, Americans could own recoilless rifles, 20 millimeter cannons, hand grenades, you know. Mortars and the, and the sky didn't fall, there was a mass chaos because, for the most part, most Americans are responsible. And we're supposed to be an armed populace, and so we should not give up that crown. And so, a, a background check, and which is really just closet registration, cloaked registration, is directly in violation of the, of the Second Amendment. That's right. So, we should not give up that ground at all, and anybody who votes for it, his name should be mud. And that's the end of their political career. And you know, there's what it takes. You got a purge amount of office. And there's at least uh, 16 Republican senators who shut down Mike Lee and Rand Paul's uh, attempt to filibuster and slow down things so that people could even read these amendments about uh, registration background check. That, uh, yeah. yeah. We should make examples of them. And, it, and it's. Elder political hides up on the fence and let them beating everybody else. But the problem is, is the rank and file of the GOP just showed the GOP old you know, party hacks that it's safe to violate the Second Amendment. You know, Romney did it as governor of Massachusetts. He signed into the law the Massachusetts assault with ban, and he was rewarded with a nomination for president mm -hmm. to run for the president for GOP. And we, they've, already, they've already kind of shown these people they can get away with violating the Second Amendment and still carry on with their political careers. Absolutely. It's very difficult now to, to get them to do the right thing because you've already, you've already rewarded them for doing the wrong thing. And Romney's not the only one. You got Peter King in New York, who's an outspoken advocate for for uh, Feinstein's bill and for anything else that comes down the pike, anti-liberty. That's and right. It's real again and again. And hey, you mentioned but Peter I King. Know, you have to change the, the GOP faithful out there, rank and file, has got to stop doing that. They've got to stop voting for lesser two evils. And you mentioned you mentioned Peter King, and and he's also one of these people who wants to get into every war if possible. He. Rabid supporter of the NDAA, just oh, yeah. like McCain, just like Lindsey Graham, just like Richard Burr in North Carolina. I mean, these are this yes. what I call the NDAA wing of the Republican Party. They really need to be thrown out by Republicans. I mean, uh, the Republican you know, Party is going to die. It'll, it'll, it'll deserve to die. Mm -hmm. The Republican Party—it's interesting. You know, they want to blame the 
Ron Paul Republican for the defeat, you know, in the last election cycle for president. And what they really should be doing is blaming the neocons, because the neocons have, have stepped so far outside the Constitution that we just won't vote for them anymore. That's right. Don't blame us. That's right. The guys who are, who are breaking the roads and, and destroying the Constitution. That's who's, that's who's destroying the party, too. And we have to understand yeah. that these neocons... These neocons are not content just to have their foreign wars. They're now bringing it home. You know, they're, they're conducting war sure, against our civil liberties. I mean, they, they, all, they all voted for the Military Commissions Act. They all voted for SOPA. They all voted for drones over our skies. Yes. Mm -hmm. you think of you know, the Patriot Act, starting off with that. Mm -hmm. Everything that's come since then, they voted for. Every single piece of it. Absolutely. Exactly. I remember it was uh, just a few weeks ago. I saw John McCain. He says, I have no problem with drones. I just have a problem with Obama controlling them. You know, that's a paraphrase of something I, I heard him say on Fox News. Now, Stuart, we're talking about what people can do in their local areas. Uh, I'm sure there are many uh, elected officials, people in law enforcement and so on, who want uh, safer streets, but they're not exactly sure what they can do. They're trying to say, do we need to get rid of the guns? Should we keep the guns? And Do we need more checkpoints? What would you suggest to somebody like that? Well, that they understand the wisdom of the founders was that the American people themselves are their own guardian. It's not a professional lawyer class, a professional police class, who's supposed to be walking around policing our streets, it's supposed to be us. We are the posse, we are the militia. So they need to respect that and revitalize, get back to that concept. That's how you stop um, terrorist actions, how you stop shooters, is the people themselves, or their own security. And that's, that's, that's constitutional homeland security, as Dr. Lanzaro points out in his book, that was titled that same thing. I encourage folks to, you know, use the gun issue as a witness test to find out whether your sheriff or your police chief or, or town council and, and, and county commissioners, you know, the Patriots or Red Coast, use that as a witness test. It's a very clear one right now. But NDA is another one, of course. But the, but the gun issue right now is so in focus and so on point that they will not stand up for your right to bear arms and understand that bedrock principle of the of the people themselves being their own security. If they don't get that, they don't get anything else. And the militia is, is, a, is a core institution of our republic, but the jury is. The two go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. They don't respect the jury, or they don't respect the militia, they got to go. Absolutely. Even the witness test, the same thing. Purge them out of office. Either they're too dumb to understand it, or they understand it, and they're opposed to it, which makes them traitors. Either way, they got to go. You know, we've, we've covered this uh, massive purchase by DHS of uh, ammunition, you know, the 1.6 or now quite a bit more than that, 1.6 billion bullets. And it appears to me that this is essentially trying to accomplish gun control by non-legislative means. And, and I'm encouraged by the fact that, you know, there, there's now 15 congressmen who are asking uh, DHS for answers about this. And the very first guy who started, who, who started asking DHS... Actually, it started in a press conference uh, that he had or a, a constituent conference where uh, somebody in his district asked him the question. And he started, we could see him kind of ruminating it on the stage and everything. And then he sent out a letter to uh, after that conference. So that was something that was brought up to him by one of his constituents. Right. Good example of how to do it. Mm -hmm. and one important thing to do is when you, when you go to these meetings like that, be clear to them that you're not some isolated, you know, gadfly. But you bring friends with you. You know, bring a coalition of groups in your, in your community, come together on key issues like NDAA or the gun issue, and let them know that you're not going to go away. You're not a flash in the pan. You're going to be there every town meeting. Mm -hmm. You're going to be there always because you're part of their constituency. Mm -hmm. That's an important message to send to them. And, and you know, and, and this guy did the right thing. He educated his uh, representative, and that representative did the right thing and turned around and started asking questions. That's right. That's how it's supposed to work. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. That's, that's great advice, Stuart. Okay, once again, we are joined by Stuart Rhodes of Oath Keepers. We definitely appreciate your time. Uh, what are your final thoughts, Stuart? Um, that the people of this country really need to get back to their roots. We really need to get back. We're running out of time to fix this. Uh, before the economic collapse happens, which is going to be catastrophic, I think Americans need to really get serious about preparing, and especially about community. The isolated prepper model is not going to save our country. Mm -hmm. so to keep you living, breathing a little bit longer, but then in the end, you'll still either fall to a domestic dictatorship or to a foreign invader. But you have to get squared away as a community. You've got to get back to the, the bedrock principles of you being the militia, you being a security force of your community, being ready to take care of yourself and each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, thank you, Stuart. Thank you. All right, be safe out there. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. 
When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. (laughs) 